Hi there, Jay Tedeschi here, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist at Autodesk. Today we're going to take a look at tube and pipe design with Inventor Pro 2016. Let's get started. So we're in a specific view rep that I've created to remove most of the bodywork from the rear assembly of this uh, front loader. And we're going to start by creating a pipe standard that is based on an existing standard. So we'll copy an existing standard and then uh, rename it. And once it's renamed, we're going to go in now and we're going to change the standard specifically to include the pipe and coupling types that we need for this specific uh, pipe set of pipe runs that we're going to be uh, creating. So let's go ahead and search now for the couplings. We'll look for uh, threaded end treatments. We'll select our standard, B16.11. We'll use the filter tool to allow us to see only those couplings which meet those specifications. We'll add that. Let's select our nominal diameter. Select our component appearance. So this is going to be zinc chromate. Now let's go set a few rules for minimum distance, maximum distance. This is for the run itself. Uh, the distance, the incremental distance, as well as the default pipe, the bend radius. So that's all done. And now what we're going to do is rename this new standard. So ASTM, let's see, <clears throat> 53-A, 53M. Uh, this is a bent steel tube run. It's one inch in diameter so we'll put all that in the description and save it. I've already activated it so this is our active standard and if you look up there uh, you can see now this is my active standard. So bent steel. Alright, let's start a new route with that. There are several different ways of creating pipe routes in Inventor. Uh, one is a derived route and that allows us to use existing 3D sketches. So I have an existing 3D sketch here that we're going to select. Once selected, the standard, uh, the, the units of measure for the standard, for the existing standard, for example, that two inch, uh, the two inch radius, that bend radius, that is automatically applied. You can see that there. Um, so that is now, that 3D sketch is essentially edited so that it, it meets the standard that we have set. Another way of creating pipe runs is to essentially drag and design as you're going. So uh, with this, there are many different ways that you can extract information from existing geometry in the model. I'm going to start by selecting here on this fitting. We'll pick a point on an axis that is normal to that fitting that's 80 millimeters up. And now we'll select a point on this edge right here. We can hit the plus sign to give us a longer distance. And I can also select geometry, including working geometry, from my model as a filter. So we just created our next point, which is at the intersection of that edge and the work plane that I just selected. So next up, let's go ahead and rotate my existing uh, manipulator, pipe manipulator, to get that at 90 degrees. And then along this axis here, I'm going to enter in 723 millimeters. That looks good. Let's rotate the view a little bit. Now down along this axis here, 250 millimeters. And finally, without specifying every single piece of this new route, I'll just select the termination. And then I can go through and basically sort through the uh, available options for terminating this route to the connector that I wanted. Uh, you should note that all of the dimensions that we enter while we are creating this type of route are editable. As you can see right there, I changed 200 to 400. Again, our uh, bend radii are being enforced by the standard. Now, again, the, the, I, I kind of hinted at this when we were creating the standard in the first place, but one of the main advantages of using this type of environment, the tube and pipe environment in Inventor Pro, is the ability to enforce standard uh, company-wide. So this, these pipes are now one inch steel diameter with the couplings that we specified, the material finish that we specified, the bend radii that we specified. Uh, this is a great way, again, as I said, of enforcing standards corporate-wide. All right. 
Uh, with that, let's take a look at uh, some of the other features of the tube and pipe environment, and that is uh, the ability of creating flexible hoses. Now again, this, this utilizes the same standard based approach that we just looked at with the tube and pipe, only with this we're going to look at hydraulic and flexible hose. So we'll go into an existing tube and pipe style, and let's go ahead and edit the uh, standard to change it somewhat. So we're going to select a roundup value. Now what this is going to allow us to do is, uh, this is very important for build materials because obviously we don't want to be purchasing, you know, a hundred point nine three seven inches of pipe of flexible hose rather. What, what this allows us to do, that roundup value is going to ensure that my bill of materials is always going to have one increments of flexible hose that are uh, some value of one. Okay, it's going to be like an even value. We won't have fractional amounts of flexible hose to purchase. Now we'll start, once the standard is selected, we place the end fittings for the flexible hose, and then we can pick as many points along the route of the hose as we need to. In this case, I'm going to select just one through this uh, bushing, uh, through the bulkhead for the front loader itself. Now we also have the option of going ahead and modifying the existing. So here you see the rounded up value as well as the actual length of the flexible hose, and we're able to modify the, the hose length with this uh, nice little tool here for editing hose length. So that increased, give us some flexibility, it increased the overall length of that hose segment that we just placed. Go ahead and finish that route. And let's place uh, another one. So new route, this is route two. We'll give it a, a part number that uh, makes sense instead of just the generic pipe run. Let's select our fitting location, select our other fitting location down on the manifold, and we will select the center of this bushing for the location for the hose to pass through. Right there, good. And that's done. And with that, let's go ahead and finish the route. And finally, all that's left to do is populate the route, which will fill in and uh, add the hoses themselves. Now the really nice thing about this is that these are adaptive, so if there are any positional changes to the assembly whatsoever, the hoses themselves will update to reflect that change. It's overall, the tube and pipe environment in Inventor Pro 2016 is very, very robust, and uh, I can't stress enough how functional it is and, and how much value it adds for companies that are doing this type of design. And with that, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I hope this was meaningful and educational, and I look forward to talking to you all again very soon.